Now, how do you bring humanism into the classroom? Establish a warm, democratic, positive and non-threatening learning environment in, in which the learner's self-concept, self-esteem are considered essential factor in learning. When it seems appropriate, function as a facilitator where, the, where he or she works, sh uh, sh shares his ideas with students. When the teacher is comfortable, the teacher may occasionally show his or her own real person by telling students how he or she feels. Provide learning experience that will lead to the development of habits and attitudes that the teacher wants to foster. Teach. Teachers should be the role model and set good examples. Students and teachers plan together the experience and activities of the curriculum. And finally, students are given choice, obviously with limitations, and freedom, of course it comes with responsibility. The extent of choice and freedom is related to their maturity, of course. You know, you, this has to come uh, from a bit more uh, uh, holistically. Okay? And then the last one is, learning is based on life experience, discovering, exploring and experimenting. Don't forget, the learning needs to be done in a natural setting so that they could continue and become a lifelong learner. Now, this is the, the third part of the, the uh, psychological tradition that I wanted to talk about. So we started off initially with the behavior, then we moved to the cognition, and then finally from the humanist point of view. So basically, we are talking about educating the, the hand, the head, and the heart. Okay? I mean, generally, we'll talk about the head being the cognition, the hand, which is extro extrovert or overt behavior movement, is called the behaviorist, and the heart is the, the affinity or the humanism, uh, the humanism part of this. So any education, just keep in mind, you should, you should stimulate or have room to excite the all three components, the head, the hand, and the heart.